purpose does the gentlewoman from Florida seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 4587 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 4587, a bill to impose targeted sanctions on individuals responsible for carrying out or ordering human rights abuses against the citizens of Venezuela and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Ross Leighton, and the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Castro, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to include extraneous material on this bill. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to place into the record letters between the chairman of the committees of referral on this bill. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Woman is recognized. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 4587, the Venezuelan Human Rights and Democracy Protection Act. This bill has received bipartisan support from many of my colleagues in the House and was passed more than two weeks ago by our Foreign Affairs Committee. I would like to thank Chairman Royce, Ranking Member Engel, Subcommittee Chairman Salmon, and Ranking Member Sears for working with my office to craft the legislation that is before us this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, we are here today to condemn the ongoing human rights abuses being committed in Venezuela and to answer the cries of the people of Venezuela. On February 12, 2014, also known in Venezuela as National Youth Day, students began protesting in several cities against Venezuelan leader Nicolas Maduro's inability to stem violent crime, his undemocratic actions, and a rapidly deteriorating economy marked by high inflation and shortages of consumer goods. Since then, these students and the Venezuelan people as a whole have been met with intimidation, with violence, with imprisonment, simply for calling for the respect of human rights and democratic change. One example is the case of Leopoldo Lopez, a pro-democracy leader who continues to be imprisoned at a military facility on trumped-up charges by Maduro in an effort by Maduro silence his many critics. The case of Maria Corina Machado is another example. This courageous woman, a member of the Venezuelan National Assembly until just recently, has stood up for the people of Venezuela and for drawing attention to the abuses being committed by the autocrat, she was stripped of her legislative seat. Since the protests began, Mr. Speaker, there have been 42 people killed nearly 60 reported cases of torture, more than 2,000 people unjustly detained, and hundreds more injured. And throughout this crisis, the so-called dialogue discussions with Maduro and UNASUR has provided no results, no actions, no concessions, and the innocent are still being imprisoned. And just two weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, 250 teenage protesters, ones who had, camped, who had camped out in the public square to protest, were rounded up and thrown in jail. Teenagers. But the problems in Venezuela go, go beyond these protests. Venezuela has now become one of the most dangerous countries in Latin America. According to press reports, between January 2014 and April 2014, there were over 4,500 homicides in Venezuela. That is a staggering statistic, Mr. Speaker. This call for freedom and democracy in Venezuela did not just start in February, and it's a shame that it has taken the events of these past few months for us to get active about the plight of the Venezuelan people. The struggle for freedom in Venezuela has been ongoing for over a decade due to the oppressive policies put forth by the late Hugo Chavez, which have now continued under his hand successor. The legislation before us, Mr. Speaker, is very direct and very clear. It seeks to target Venezuelan officials by denying them visas to enter the United States, 
blocking property, freezing assets, and prohibiting financial transactions to members of the Venezuelan regime who are responsible for the commission of serious human rights abuses against the people of Venezuela. Very clear, very direct. The United States Congress must stand ready to act on the calls of freedom and democracy around the globe. And the Venezuelan people have sent us a distress signal for help. Today, we answer that call by condemning the actions taken by the Maduro regime and showing our support to the people of Venezuela who are seeking liberty, freedom, human rights, and justice. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of our time. <clears throat>